Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing some repots on some fowls that I've kind of highlighted as having a few issues in their current setups that I wanted to take out of their current containers in their semi-hydro containers and put them into clear self-watering containers where I can better monitor the water levels and also address a couple of issues that I've had with uh, a few of my fowls. So we start off with the problem fowls first and I'll just talk to you a little bit about them. So these three fowls here are my problem children. So they are orchids that I got from an Orchids Deluxe. Um, I will link you to that down below. It was a bit of a disappointing order. Um, when they arrived they were all extremely yellow and very small. They, they were packed very wet in very um, cool conditions so it was just after a heat wave in summer. The weather had cooled down and in England it wasn't that hot um, but the previous month in Europe had been very hot and I guess Orchids Deluxe were still kind of in that frame of mind when they packed my orchids. So they were packed soaking wet um, with newspaper all around them and obviously sealed then in a closed paper bag and uh, most of them rotted and died and I've only got three left to these three which is really unfortunate. Um, many of you will know if you've read down the comments of that video, if you followed that video. I, I wasn't particularly happy with the order and the way that they dealt with the situation. Um, I have since kind of resolved it with them and they, they did give me a discount code off a future order if I do want to place another order. But yeah, I guess that hopefully they'll have learned from that experience and this might just be something that was very specific to me because I know a lot of other people get fantastic orchids from Orchids Deluxe. I did not and the ones that have survived I I'm convinced there's something wrong with. So they all arrived extremely yellow, sort of this sort of shade. And the colour did partially come back on this particular orchid, but look at it. it I'm very um, concerned about the patching on the leaves, which is called chlorosis, where chlorophyll isn't being uh, synthesised in some areas or by the looks of it. Although it's slightly green rather than completely yellow, so maybe some is being synthesized, but this patchiness can sometimes indicate a uh, viral infection. Not always. Um, and they are growing roots now. I'll just show you. We do have actively growing roots. It's a little root tip there. Um, and I just think there's, yeah, there's one here as well. There's a few. So it's finally kind of got a good root system going down in. But this problem hasn't really resolved in a... I mean, it's more green in patches than it was, but I'm still not completely happy with it. So I'm going to put it into a, a slightly different setup and maybe put some pumice um, in the mix, try and give it a little bit more moisture, because these root tips, I'm a bit worried if they were to reactivate that maybe the dry top layer is too dry. It hasn't actually tried to produce any new roots in my care. I think it's just branched off old ones, which is very unusual for a fowl. Usually I get quite a good response from fowls. Um, so yeah, that's number one. And that is Phalaenopsis crimson cherub crossed with Penang girl, which is then, that cross has then been crossed with LD's bear king. And another Orchids Deluxe fowl is this one, which just looks so incredibly dehydrated to me. I'm really concerned about it. Um, but it does have roots and live roots, which it does really concern me that it's got live roots. And I can see one root tip just down there that's gone into the reservoir. Um, so yeah, that worries me a little bit. It looks so dehydrated, even if it's in a semi-hydro system and it's got roots. So I'm going to take it out and have a look and repot it into a pumice mix. This one I was very concerned at that might have stem rot, but it never progressed any further. One of the leaves kind of rotted off. But it never actually got to the stage where it was like stem rot, which all the others kind of did get stem rot. So yeah, that one is not looking good at all. 
And the last one is actually kind of starting to recover. It was incredibly yellow when I got it. And the green has come back in patches on the leaves. And it's actually started, it had dried root tips when I got it and it started kind of pushing through the dried root tips, new root tips. It's also got another new root on the way in there, I think. Something's pushing through green through the stem there and also up here, two places. Um, so I'm going to repot this now because it's got good roots, it's got actively growing roots in the pot but I'm concerned that the dry top layer might be a bit too dry and those roots are so precious and they don't look particularly strong like sometimes you get a really fat strong root with a really long root tip on and you just know it's going to be fine but those root tips don't look particularly um, resilient to me so I am going to repot it into a pumice mix in a self-watering pot in my kind of new mix to try and um, give it a better chance at recovery. But yeah, my Orchis Deluxe Orchis I have left do not look healthy or good. So I've tried to keep them as separate as possible. If there is a viral infection, it's not transmissible through air. It'll be transmissible if I were to share water, which I don't, or if I had, for example, another thrips attack and the thrips sucked on one of these and then went to another orchid and sucked on one of those. So I'm very, very lucky that I, thrips didn't actually get to these plants. I never found any sign of thrips damage on them and they're kept in a separate corner. So I am very, very cautious with these because I, I suspect in two of them that we have something wrong with the plants. Um, just not healthy plants in my eyes. So moving on slightly from my Orchis Deluxe issue, um, we've got a few more fowls which I think would benefit from some pumice in their mix and changing into different pots because these particular pots were great when I was first starting out with some hydro but the top layer does stay incredibly dry and the reservoir is not very big at all I really didn't um, plan it very well this is incidentally a mini fowl that I got from Ikea you can see um, this leaf size before and then the leaf size <laughs> Now, it took a while to actually do anything. I think when they're fed these kind of stunting hormones, they take a while to recover. This is another case here of a mini fowl that I got, which has then grown bigger and bigger leaves, and it's actually kind of more of a normal sized fowl. So, yeah, uh, bear that in mind when you're buying mini fowls. They're not always actually mini fowls. Sometimes they are just fowls that have been stunted a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to kind of work on these and we'll start off with my Orchids Deluxe Orchids. So I'm just going to clear the table. Okay, so we're going to start off with this sorry little specimen. Um, so this is the Crimson Cherub Plan Girl Cross with LDs Bear King. And I've run out of my usual containers because they are currently in my Lekka. Um, and pumice rinsing system so I always wash my lecker a few times until the water runs clear and then I literally just put it into one of these containers and leave it in water any residual salts or sediment that was on the lecker kind of comes out then and I will put that straight into the pot and then rinse it a few times through after the repot same goes with the pumice I've also started boiling uh, my horticultural grip I would which are the non-wicking pebbles that I use as a top layer because I found a few snails in pots and I wasn't 100% sure that it was this causing it but somebody else did also say that they tried this and found a few snails so I am a bit concerned that there's potential snail contamination in some of the bags of the non-wicking pebbles that I'm using um, they, I just buy them in massive sacks from the garden centre so it's possible that snails can get in somehow so just in case it is this it might not be but I am taking precautions and boiling and pre-treating this before use so that's my little system of media that's all ready to go so back to the phalaenopsis in question just gonna gently take it out of the pot which shouldn't be too hard it doesn't have that many roots Although it does have more than I actually anticipated it having. None of them are looking dead at all. 
so it's produced some good roots so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not going to throw it out I'm not going to be intimidated by this it could just be that it was so so run down that it's taking a while to be able to actually synthesize chlorophyll again because it was pretty much all this color when I first got it which didn't actually show up that well on camera during the unboxing but they were all pretty much this color they were just so stressed and obviously I lost several slash most of them to stem rot but actually looking like we've got some especially this side these roots are really nice this one isn't looking so good so I will take that one off but then look at this so it goes to show that maybe you should never cut these dried roots because that bit's alive and any root that you can get at this point with an orchid that's stressed is a help even if it's not looking so great I would if in doubt leave it on okay so I'm not actually going to mess with that root system I think there's a big difference between the velium and being dead and the actual um, inner root being dead so I'm pretty much going to reuse the same pot but I'm just going to use a mix of pumice and lecker and I'm actually going to clean up this pot because I've got a little bit of algae not too much but we'll give it a clean off okay so I have cleaned off the pot there and um, rinsed off the lacquer I haven't like boiled it organ or anything but I don't think that's necessary so then we're just gonna place the lacquer into the bottom of the reservoir there okay so the bottom half is filled with lacquer and then we're gonna place our orchid into the pot and then we're just gonna fill around it with more pumice and lacquer Okay, so that is the mix that we've got at the moment. Quite a lot of pumice in there. I really want to give this orchid the best chance possible at survival, um, since it does actually have some, some good roots in there, so I'm not really sure what's going on with the orchid. Um, we'll give it longer and hope that it does decide that it wants to adjust or something. Um, but yeah, it's taking its time in, um, recovering from whatever was done to it in the nursery so I'm just going to put a top layer of the non-wicking pebbles on the top here to stop the dry top layer desiccating any new roots okay so that is that orchid all repotted there and I'm just going to go and put this in front of a fan to dry off because whenever I repot a fowl I want to know that any water that I've flicked in between a leaf somewhere is going to dry before the weather cools. So I always, after repots of most of my hot growers, actually just most orchids in general, I go and put them in front of a fan for a while to uh, try and dry them up before bedtime. Next up we're going to repot this little fowl. Um, this is the Zeng Min Sputtering and it arrived very tiny with very very little leaves and very yellow leaves. It has since um, developed a little bit more green pigmentation, you can still see some patchiness of where it was very yellow from before. It is also now starting a new leaf just in there, which is fantastic. But I just want to make sure that it continues to do well. So I'm going to put it into a self-watering container. Uh, which is just a DIY self-watering container that I've made. Looks a bit big for it, I know, but it's starting to get a good root system. So in order to get rid of the normal looking pebbles that I put on the top here, just gonna literally flick them off. that gets rid of most of them if a few do fall into the mix I'm really not bothered about it they're inorganic they're not going to break down only issue is they're smaller so in theory less air pockets but I don't think it really matters too much as long as we get most of them okay so I'm literally just going to pour off the lecker that's in this cup into the new pot okay so that is like our lower level done and then I'm going to fill around with a mix of pumice and lecker for the upper levels and just to show you the root system on this little guy not amazing but nothing's really died 
Then we're just going to put a nice thick layer of the non-wicking pebbles on the top there to kind of bury the new roots that are forming a little bit and help them get down into the media. And that is that repot done for the Zeng Min sputtering and I am just going to go and pop that in front of the fan again to make sure it's completely dried off after the repot and then I will just fill the water reservoirs as normal towards the end of the day. Okay, so I've cleaned up after that and we've just got one more repot left to do for the Orchids Deluxe Orchids and this is the rather sorry looking Fowl Sogo Shito Zeng Min Muscadine crossed with LD Double Dragon. And I'm really not sure what's wrong with this Fowl because we have quite good roots but I'm going to get it out and have a look at it. Okay. So it's almost better when a plant that looks like this doesn't have many roots because at least you know the cause. But look at this. It's produced a really great root system in semi-hydro. Like, look at all these roots. Look at all these new root tips that are growing. At least it's still got the energy that it's actively growing root tips. I'm going to put it into a more water retentive media and see if that helps it out. Because I really can't see any reason for it to be looking this dehydrated other than something else is wrong with the plant. But if it is something like Fusarium, there's nothing that, that we can do for this orchid anyway. So we might as well. It's producing great roots. We'll give it the best possible chance of survival and often with Fusarium, um, the plant can kind of overcome it until it gets stressed again and its immune system goes down and the Fusarium can kind of take over again. But the other option is I just throw this plant away and I'm not going to do that. So we'll repot it back up, probably into probably the same pot to be honest. But I will put a mixture of pumice in there as well to try and give it a bit more moisture and I will also put a top layer of the horticultural grit down and see if that'll help it. While we've got it out I'm just going to clean the pot up. Okay so the pot has been all cleaned up so I'm just going to put a bottom layer of lacquer in again as usual. And we're going to just reuse the same lacquer, I've just given it a quick wash. Next we're just going to put some pumice in and layer it up and pop the orchid in. Okay, so that is that rather sorry looking fowl all repotted. It actually has a really good root system, so I don't know what's going on. That's the kind of mix ratio that I've used. And the top layer of the non-wicking pebbles to try and uh, encourage roots to keep going down through the top layer, not get stuck at the dry kind of areas. So I'm not really sure what's going on with these fowls to be totally honest got good roots. Um, we'll just give them a bit longer and see what happens with them. Hopefully the addition of the pumice in the media will help with moisture retention but for this particular fowl I don't think that was the issue. I can't really say what the issue was but or is. It's not a healthy looking orchid and I think that they just came with kind of a, a large range of issues that may just mean that it's taking a long time to recover but yeah these things happen. I think I'm going to leave it there for today's video guys as more of a kind of orchid deluxe orchid update I guess um, and I will carry on repotting and show you a separate video for the rest of my little mini fowls which are actually all healthy just uh, I want to add some pumice in there so that'll hopefully be a bit more of a cheerful video so you know the drill if you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and I hope you did enjoy this video I'll see you later guys bye